All right, good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing today? Um, we are going to be getting into Microsoft Flight in something, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna turn down this music. That's, that's the first different thing that we're gonna do, is turn down the music. Cut off, just down. Okay, so we are using a new service today called On Air. I have been playing on On Air for five, maybe six days now. I'm not really sure exactly how long it's been because time has become a very abstract construct since I uh, signed up for On Air, which is not a bad thing for On Air. Uh, I'd like to, to, to say thank you very much to the folks at On Air. Uh, they even had to go in and um, manually accept my uh, application because um, their emails weren't going out. And because there's just so many people that are signing up for these kind of services because of Microsoft Flight Simulator that uh, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. But I'm going to be honest. I like this one better than I like the idea of FSE. There seems to be more progression in it, more things to do. It accounts for more realism. What it is, what On Air is, is a career modifier. It's basically an add-on to any flight simulator. You can, you can fly any flight simulator with it. Matter of fact, they even have this thing set up. You don't have to have a flight simulator at all. You can just basically use it like an airline tycoon game where you hire... Um, you hire NPC AI pilots and they fly things for you and you just kind of handle the business end. However, I can also join as a pilot, fly it in simulator, have to pay rental fees and purchase fees and maintenance fees and such on my, on my plane. Uh, I have to pay for gas. I have to pay landing costs. Um, but I get paid for delivering cargo from place to place, and this helps me to explore some of the smaller airports and find a little more fun in the general aviation stuff. Um, it's got a little uh, interface. I'm going to show you what it looks like here for just a second. Uh, this is it ready to fly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to it and start tracking. This is going to set the time in my simulator. It's going to set my payload and my fuel in my simulator. And then I'm going to turn that right back off so I can come back into the sim. And there we go. And let's get this thing started, shall we? So we have to actually use some realistic procedures. A lot of them are not possible because this is a default aircraft. It can't do a whole lot. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my uh, bacon light and my strobe light. And then I'm going to bring my mixture control up. Now, at first, I'm just going to show you a flight. After I've shown you a flight, I'm going to show you how working inside on air works. So let's get this thing started. Here in a second, you're going to hear on air tell me that they're aware of me. Uh, so don't get surprised. Here we go. Don't make a liar of me. Your flight will be monitored until you land and shut down the engines. There we go. Okay. Now we can go ahead and turn our lights back on. I'm going to go ahead and pre-select our altitude. Today we're going about 200, I think miles so i'm gonna set us to about twelve thousand five hundred because we're vfr and then i'm gonna start off with our heading bugged the way the runway heading hey banana bread thank you so much for sending that raid let's uh it would help if i could spell and thank you so much for that follow as well. I appreciate it so much. It looks like my alerts are not triggering. I'm not sure why. I have to look that up when I get there. 
But uh, we are going to do some flying in the uh, Cessna 308 Grand Caravan today. And it looks like you were streaming Grand Theft Auto V. I, I have played that game, and I did enjoy it. I did get kind of lost in it, though. I, I, I stopped doing the main quest because I was having too much fun. Which is the point of any game, to be fair. Um, Alright, so we are going to take off right now from... Where are we at? We're at K88, and we're going to 02MU. Um, see if I can't pull up what the names of those airports are. Allen County and Timberline Air Park. So that's where we're going to and from. And then we are going to do more flights. This is not a one flight deal. This is going to be several flights today. I might even wind up going what? long. Um, I have had so much fun with this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and release our parking brake. And let's get taking off. Uh, no. Over torquing. And we're up. Airborne time logged. Thank you very much. Alright, so let's get ourselves vaguely on our nav course. I'm going to turn on the autopilot. Get it to flight level change. And nav. And now it's just going to kind of bank onto course. The autopilot's going to handle most things. I'm going to go ahead and bug that speed up a little more. 91 knots. Alright. So welcome everybody from Bananas Chat. I appreciate you guys jumping over here and throwing follows and all the love that you guys have brought to the channel. Um, I, I hope you guys are interested in the little flight sim. Uh, we are in the brand new Microsoft Flight Simulator, which that is the blackest grass I have ever seen in my whole daggone life. I'm not sure if that's that's natural. Um, it really does not seem that way. But this is the first time I've ever seen that. Maybe that's because I didn't buffer the area very much before we flew. But the rest of this looks absolutely stunning. Um, I wish the, the aircraft were a little more modeled. Blood water. Who knows? Um, there's definitely sharks there. That's, that's for sure. There's definitely sharks down there. Um... I'm going to go ahead and turn on cabin lights, even though they're not actually modeled, I don't think. But the little things... Uh, the little things do uh, switch back and forth. So I'm, I'm going to do them anyway, because it's good procedure. This is where we're going. Uh, if I can get it on the map. Which I can just barely. Um, we are carrying... What are we carrying today? Uh, it looks like printed magazines. 873 pounds. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that. This is the um, this is the UI of On Air. And you can see here um, the direction that we're heading is actually on that little magenta icon. Um, the direction of the place that we're supposed to land is what it's pointing at with the little arrow. It says over here on the left where I'm from, where I'm to, the heading, uh, what I'm carrying, how much of it, how long until it's due. We've got 18 eight days, 14 hours to make this delivery. Not that big of a time constraint. Not when I just picked it up. Um, we have no passengers on board. We have plenty of fuel. Um, I think we should have had more than that. Or no, no, that's gallons where I loaded in pound. That's fine. That's absolute. Okay. So let's go ahead and drop that down. 
so that we can focus a little more on the flying aspect. Um, I am not a real world pilot, just so everybody is aware. Not a real world pilot. Uh, also, my tracking stuff up there at the top, not really going to work all that well today. Uh, the altitude obviously will, but uh, I can't get Sim Toolkit Pro to accept some of these smaller airports. So all I can do is kind of throw up the ones that do work. But like it, it couldn't find 02MU, which is where we're, we're heading right now. So the tracking bar down at the bottom and the uh, departure and arrival up top, the ETA, none of that's going to work until I have both airports are ones that it knows where they are. <clears throat> but all the other statistics are correct, which is why I'm still leaving that overlay up. Um, and this is pretty much it. This is the game. Uh, I do need to handle my radios real quick. Kansas City Center Cessna Alpha Sierra X-ray Golf Sierra is type Cessna Caravan 8 miles southeast. It did not of take my registration. I don't know why. Cessna Alpha Sierra X-ray Golf Sierra Kansas City Center. Squawk 7056. 7056. Squawk 7056 Cessna X-ray Golf By the way, thank you so much for that follow PB and Jam. I appreciate it so much. I hope you enjoy the content that we're throwing up here. I do this on every Tuesday. Um, usually I do airliners. But um, but Microsoft Flight is terrible for airliners. And not a lot of people are talking about that because they suck. So you don't want to... You have to make content for the new game. It's, it's new. But... Nobody wants to fly the airliners, so everybody's flying GA, and nobody's talking about the airliners, um, except privately. Well, I, sh I should be more fair. There are a few that have been very critical of the airliners, and that critique is very well deserved. They should have waited until either they had more time to properly develop some uh, airliners that are stock to the game, or until they had some payware available. Right now... It's looking like uh, the earliest we're going to see payware um, airliners is maybe in January. And a lot of this game seems unfinished. Like, this is supposed to be real-world weather. Now, I don't know for sure that this is not real-world weather, because this is maybe um, one or 200 miles away from me, but I can tell you, just looking out my window, it is overcast. And you can probably see the air around my house from here. Um, I think it's back that way, but, I mean, realistically, the whole area around looks the same here. Um, so the big sell on Microsoft Flight Simulator was VFR and weather. Like, it, it, And this is what we're doing. We're flying VFR. The, the flight is not bad for VFR. For small aircraft, for flying visually, it's fine. Um, and it looks beautiful. This is all stock. This is straight out of the box. This is what you'll see. Which is a hell of a lot better than what you'll get with X-Plane or with old FSX. Uh, you'd have to do ortho for this. Um, which means hours and hours spent downloading terabytes of actual satellite data to lay down on the ground. And then you have to also either buy or find meshes to make those three-dimensional. Um, otherwise, it'll totally flatten the ground. And you'll just have a big sticker across the, the, the United States. Um, unfortunately, um, the airliners suck. The GA planes have a lot of inoperative systems. I mean... There's very little on this that actually works. Everything says in op for it, because it doesn't actually do anything. I like stickers too, but not not when I'm playing games. Like, unless the, the stickers are a mechanic of the game, like, you know, I think, uh, what, Fortnite and uh, Overwatch have stickers? But that's the that's not the sort of game that we're playing here right this, this is a simulator it's supposed to be all about the flying and part of that flying is just the beauty of being able to fly around and see things 
And you can actually see your house here. Um, I can't see mine because it's too much covered in trees. But um, you can absolutely fly over your house and actually see your house modeled if your house is visible from the sky. And that's something really cool. Um, I really do like that. I just wish that the planes worked better. I wish the autopilot worked better. Um, like one thing, I'll, I'll show at some point how the autopilot can very easily get confused and just start pitching you really badly. Um, if you try and do a IFR where you're going from GPS waypoint to waypoint, if it misses a waypoint, it will, no joke, fly completely around that waypoint forever, trying to fly directly over it. Um, it'll also bank you straight out of the sky. It has trouble with uh, going direct to waypoints. Um, procedures are very, very incorrect in some cases. Uh, it's missing procedures, obviously. Um, Navigraph hasn't figured out how to interact with their FMCs yet, so they can't update the navigation data. Um, so right now, for IFR, for, for flight planning, that sort of thing, I will not be doing any of that in Microsoft Flight until they've done something better. Um, Right now, that, that's something I will only do in X-Plane because only X-Plane does it well. Kansas City Center, Cessna Alpha, Sierra, um, and that's part of that's just because it's a, it's a more mature platform. Um, this is a very young platform. It's like, what, a month old? Uh, not even. It's like 20 days old. Um, also, I guarantee the altimeter is not 299 or 2 around here. I don't know why they think that, but the weather, the live weather in the United States is bugged badly. Um, that's, that's really unfortunate. But it is what it is, and it's good for this. For exactly what we're doing right now, it is good. Um, and we're going to fly around and do a couple of these legs today, where we're just, we're just flying cargo around, we're getting paid... Um, we're in a service called On Air. I'll throw that back up here real quick. So we are flying some printed magazines around. Uh, we're gonna get paid, I think, like three grand for this flight. And then I'm gonna turn around from this airport that we're gonna land at, and we're going to uh, fly to another place. And I'll show you more of the process of working with On Air when we get to that uh, new location. But for right now, I'm kind of just showcasing the flight and the, the Grand Caravan itself. The interior is absolutely a beautiful construct. I mean, I don't know how they think that this is enough for 14 people. I mean, I count eight seats plus a captain and co-pilot. So I'm not sure how they think 14 people fit in here, but I, I guess maybe they're counting that back row. Very back bulkhead. But, uh... <laughs> that's what they say in On Air. Landing lights on above one two. I did not realize we'd gotten that high already. <laughs> I thought we were still lower. I'm gonna go ahead and pull back our mixture a bit. Quite a bit. Also going to... Pull out flaps. Because those should definitely not still be on. We got all that all caught up in uh, in taking off of the stream that I forgot to retract my flaps. Kansas City Center, Cessna Alpha, Sierra, X ray Golf, Sierra, 12,400 feet. Now, the cool thing about On Air, On Air is a very well-rounded program. I have had a lot of fun with it the last few days. Uh, I'm in a virtual airline with uh, another streamer that is uh, 
ever so slightly larger than me, um, named Buona. You should check him out. I'm not sure if he's alive now. Um, but that's Buona. And he's been flying this a lot lately. I mean, a lot. And he's the one that got me into it. It's so much fun, guys. If and, and you don't even have to have a simulator to do it. You can just pay the monthly access, the yearly access. I mean, even, I think the longest is two years. And you can get two years of access for $67. That's just an average game. For two years of access. And you don't even have to have a sim. All you have to do is go on Cumulus, which is one of the three servers. There's, there's three different servers. You can go on, I think, either Cumulus or Stratus and, uh, and be done without a simulator. Um, because all you do is you hire AI pilots. And those AI pilots fly around the cargo that you've requested. You still have to rent all the planes. You still have, or buy. You can also buy planes. Uh, you still have to pay all the landing fees and uh, penalties, anything like that. All the maintenance. Uh, you even pay their salaries. Um, but you don't have to fly in a simulator, and they just do their thing. And it's basically just a, like a real-time airline tycoon game. Um, however, if you do want to try out Microsoft Flight Sim, uh, there's no reason for money to hold you back. Yes, I know that the base game is $60, and then I think they've got a $90 and a $120 version. The differences are each one gets five more planes and five more sceneries that are, that are handcrafted by... Microsoft. Okay? Now, I'll tell you this. Their handcrafted sceneries are good, but not optimized. And honestly, what people are handcrafting on their own, the things that I've seen, absolutely blow it away. Orbex has some amazing stuff in, like, London City that I've seen. It is absolutely stunning. It is Gorgeous. Um, and I wish I had Orbex scenery. Um, so I would not let those determine whether or not you want to pay extra for the game. I, I would not, unless you really, really want the additional aircraft, I would not let the sceneries determine your desire to pay extra for the game. Um, the only thing I would have paid extra for is that Dreamliner. Of course, now I know that Dreamliner sucks. So, I'm going to be waiting for a Payware's uh, Dreamliner anyway. And the uh, the sceneries are not that impressive. They're certainly better than default. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but there are also some notable absences in the handcrafted scene. But, point is, if you want to play this game... And you don't have $60, $90, $120. That's not a problem. There is a program that Microsoft is doing called Game Pass for PC. And if you go and sign up today for Game, Fa Game Pass for PC, you will pay $1 today. You'll pay $1 today, you'll pay $5 next month and every month thereafter. And you'll get access to a bunch of games this is one of them. You will get access to the $60 version, not the $120, but you'll get access to this game. It would literally take you a year of paying that... or No, two years, I think. Um, no, one year. One year. I can math, I promise. Um, <clears throat> so, it will take you one year to pay off the value of the game that you get through Game Pass. And at any time, you can just stop. 
if you decide that you don't like Microsoft Flight Simulator, if it's not for you, that's fine. Just cancel your game pass and you won't pay another dime. Um, you won't be able to play a game uh, you won't be able to play any game pass games anymore, but that's not an issue. You already decided the game isn't for you. That's something that I think more more companies need to adopt is something like that where you can you can do trials of games like that. It, it, it's the modern version of a trial. You 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 ask for minuscule amounts of money just to keep everybody from, you know, grabbing it and and then never paying for it. And in exchange, you let them play the game and if they don't like it, they don't have to keep it. They don't have to keep paying for it. You can pay six bucks, pl pay, play it for two months. Find out if this is for you. And the cost for on-air? Forget about it. it. It's like $3 a month. It works out to be pennies. It's nothing. So that would be my advice. If you are unsure, go start your free seven-day trial of on-air and then grab Game Pass. You can grab... Uh, Microsoft Flight for a dollar. So for one dollar for seven days, you can try both on air and Microsoft Flight together. And then you'll have Microsoft Flight for the rest of the month. And you can cancel at the end of the month. You could be playing this right now for one dollar. Money is not an excuse. Now, it's not terribly easy to fly with a keyboard and mouse. I have, however, done it. I've done it exactly once. I will never do it again. Uh, unless I think I actually have a uh, a channel points goal. So I finally got a use for you guys with those channel points. Um, you can actually go into those channel points and do a couple things now. Um, that I've added to the stream. And I don't remember what they all are but I know that they are not necessarily in my favor one of them I think is doing a full flight with just keyboard and mouse and I am really not looking forward to that but um, that's a big goal you can also just redeem some channel points to, to make me get up and stretch to get some water um, those not so bad and you can just redeem those at any time so, um, that's how that works. And, um, hopefully it's going to be fun for you guys. I know that it, it's not going to be as visceral as with a streamer that's using a camera, but honestly, I can't, I don't know where I would put a camera in my overlay anyway, and I just personally don't particularly care for being on camera. I don't think that I am the star of this show. I think that the games are. And I will absolutely showcase, like, how, how am I going to put this? Um, I am important to the stream, because otherwise you can watch just about anybody play Microsoft Flight. Um, so I'm important to the stream, but I'm trying to show you something, right? I want you to see these things and get involved. I mean... Like, you guys realize, this is multiplayer. I'm not in the multiplayer right now because I don't want to worry about people shouting things on my stream. Or, uh, you know, people trying to dive bomb me because I'm a streamer. But this has multiplayer. You can fly with a dozen of your best friends for free. For, well, for one dollar. You can get a dozen of your best friends right now, one dollar a piece... You can come in and each one of you can fly in a connected world as long as you connect to the same server. And you can see each other flying. Now right now, there's no collisions with each other, I, th I think. That might be a setting, but I know that I'm not colliding with people. Um, which is the only unrealistic part of it. But it provides things that we have had tools to add to simulators for years. For years we've had these tools. I'm going to go ahead and knock my speed down. Because I want to reduce my fuel consumption. 
go ahead and also pull my RPMs back. As long as we can still maintain our torque. Be able to throttle down, mixture down. We're at 345. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with 345. We're not in the 400s. So I'll count that as a win. Yeah. If you're if you're enjoying what you're seeing, let me know. Um, I've also got a Discord. And if you want to join that, feel free. Go ahead. Uh, we've got quite a few people there. It's not an it's not a huge Discord, as you can tell, because I'm not a huge streamer. Uh, however, I do kind of envision it not just as a Discord for me or a Discord for my stream, okay? The name of my Discord is DFTTF. Now, the reason why it has that name, that isn't, that is not an acronym, it's a, uh, it's an abbreviation. It means Discord for the totally fucked. It means that it's here for all of us. We're all just fucked up people, and we need a home to be in, right? So, if you have a stream, throw your stream out and streaming announcements anytime you go live. I'm happy to have you do that. I'm not limiting, and, and I don't use announcements either. Like, I only use, I, I only announce my streams in stream announcements just like anybody else on my server can do. Um, I want to build a network of people just working together and trying to advance ourselves as individuals on this platform, right? Small streamers have to stick together. We have to work together. That's how we get bigger. That's how we grow. Real quick, speaking of growing. Go ahead and follow Banana Bread. Don't want to forget about that. So yeah, um, feel free to join the Discord, interact with people there. If there's something that you need out of my Discord, you know, if you need a channel for a game that you enjoy playing and you want to network with other players, then just message me. My DMs are open. Um, you don't have to be a friend. We do have to share a server, but that means, you know, if you're on my server, you can message me. Um, if there's anything that you need, if you need a voice channel for playing D&D with your friends... Let me know. I'm happy to throw it up for you. Um, as long as it doesn't get abused, as long as we don't do anything that's going to jeopardize the server and make Discord shut us down, I'm happy to do it. Um, there are, however, no not safe for work channels and not going to be. That's the one line I'm going to draw because I don't want to have to start following the Discord trust and safety team too closely and know what all they consider too far for even not safe for work. I, I don't want to do that. That's not the vibe I want to do. Um, that's not work I want to do in my life. All right, looks like we're about 40 miles away from our destination. I'm going to go ahead and zoom us in a little bit. Looks like we've still got plenty of fuel. I'm really hoping this place has fuel because I did not bring enough to, to not be able to get more. <laughs> So, worst case scenario, I'll just have to find a close by FBO in the in the area where I can buy fuel. These are things that I probably should be looking up before I start a flight. But I didn't because I am one whole dumb and I've only been doing this for like 5 days. So I'm still not used to the idea because understand, like I said, I come from a background of flying nothing but airliners. So, I'm not used to having places not have gas. Uh, plus, I've, I've usually just used the simulator to control my gas. I've never had to uh, control it through a third-party program. And the simulators don't care where you are. You can add gas in mid-flight if you need to. But with on-air, you can only do it when you're actually on the ground at a place with an FBO that's selling gas. And it is dependent on what kind of gas you need 
You know, like I landed in an FBO a while back, uh, I think it was two days ago, where they had general gasoline for things like, uh, <clears throat> for like single engine propellers. But when it came, when it comes to this, this is a turboprop. It uses Jet 1A and it didn't have any Jet 1A. So I was stuck. I had to, I had to actually make a flight with not enough fuel and glide into my destination to grab enough fuel to get someplace else. I wound up going dead stick the last, I don't know, two miles. <coughs> Which was difficult for me because I've never flown a Grand Caravan dead stick. So I should have to descend at about 12 and a half miles. And we're at 33, so I'm going to need to go about another 20 miles before we start descending. But we're going to start calling 02 Mike Uniform here in about um, 12 miles. I, I usually try to contact the airport about 20 miles out. Although, really, this is a small enough airport, I probably shouldn't be doing it that far. I should be doing it a lot closer for, for this small of an airport, maybe uh, 10 or 5 miles. That just gets to where there's a lot to do in a very short period of time. I'm going to go ahead and turn this music up just a bit more. I actually forgot it was playing. You guys will have to let me know if I get it too loud or if it's too quiet. Um, it almost looks like we're just flying IFR, but we are not. Um... I apologize, my my overlay does cover a lot of my windscreen. Where's it, where's it cover? It covers to about here, so you can't even see this menu, which is how you control everything in MFS. <laughs> oh, I apologize for that. I may have to look into my, my uh, overlay a little bit. Um, but honestly, I think it looks pretty good. I'm not going to mess with it unless I have to. Um, but I promise, like, even when I'm set up like this, I can still see a lot of the, the air around me. I apologize if I don't position my cameras right to get you guys a good look. If there's anything uh, that you guys can't see, let me know. I do watch chat fairly closely. Uh, except during takeoff and landing. That's the two times where I'm not really able to focus on what's going on in the channel because I have to control the aircraft. Like right now, we're just on autopilot. I'm not doing a whole lot. I'm mostly just monitoring, making sure we don't go off course because uh, Microsoft's autopilot is terrible and it can absolutely send me off course. Um, I'm monitoring how close we are to our destination and know when to start our descent. Um, and occasionally I'm trimming out our uh, controls here to try and maximize our fuel efficiency. Which it really doesn't seem to do that much. Uh, but we are going to be descending here probably in, I want to say about two minutes. Maybe longer, maybe longer. I mean, I guess we're going, what, 127 knots. And... Hmm. It's about 20 knots, 10 minutes. We're going to descend here in about 20 minutes. Yes? No. Maybe. I can't math. 
I take it back. I'm totally bad at math. Um, actually, what I'm bad at is simple math. Complex math? Pretty good. Uh, and things that I can remember, like formulae. Very easy for me. Uh, the issue starts getting in with the actual computation, just because I'm tired. You know, I come from, from all day I've been doing accounting. This is what I do for a living is accounting and artwork. So when I do accounting all day and then I come here and I'm like, now, what's these numbers again? How do I divide? Like, I seem like a child, like I'm still in elementary school because I can't remember how to divide in my head. <clears throat> when really it's just that I'm, I'm tired of the numbers. <laughs> Let's see, we're probably going to descend to about 2,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and get our uh, autopilot configured on our G1000. Uh, I'm going to have to go to 2,500 because we're VFR. far. <coughs> We got another seven miles to go. Definitely not going to be doing that 20 minutes. Uh, it seems more like about five minutes. Tops. Now I do know there's, there's some things that confuse people like, what is a knot? Knot can mean two things. One is a speed, the other is a distance. Because technically speaking, you wouldn't call a nautical mile a knot, but some people do. Anyway, knots are 15% longer than a mile per hour. Because a, no a nautical mile is 15% longer than a mile. And I think that has to do with basically converting it to a base 10. Um, so that it's not like 5,000, something weird, some, some like 5,000 some odd feet in a mile. It adjusts it so that you can do conversions. Um, see, what are we? 16.5. We got four miles to go before we start our descent. I'm going to go ahead and start that descent. And then I'm going to cut power. I'm going to turn up our mixture and our RPMs. try and tune it. It's real 2 mu It's right there. We're going to select a runway for landing. We only have runway 36. Why does it only go one way? It should also be 18. A full stop landing. Now it's position, then it'll give me the one cheat that I allow myself because a lot of these are just grass strips. And it has no way for me to tell where the strip actually is, so I've added these. Um, now those look like it's actually coming from the other side, so I'm not going to quite do it the way that it wants me to. I'm going to put it in heading mode, and I'm going to turn left. Until we are direct north of the airport. And it feels to me like we are descending way too fast. I'm gonna turn it down and descend us at about 105 knots. That way we descend a little more slowly. Go ahead and turn off our starter. That didn't need to be on the entire time. 
Also, if you're curious about the music that's been playing, this is uh, from the uh, OC Remix Final Fantasy IV, uh, Final Fantasy Seven uh, called Voices of the Lifestream. This is uh, royalty-free music. Um, but I do like to give them credit because it is fantastic music. I have loved it for a great many years. And I could not imagine a better soundtrack for the stream. <coughs> Let's wait until we see bearing 180. And then we're just going to roll that over to... Actually, it should want me landing from the south. Oh well, we're just going to land on it from the north. We're not going to worry about it. This is this is Microsoft Flight. It is just a game. I don't consider it a simulator. It is slightly more realistic. Slightly. Oh. I apologize if you guys hear any of that. I uh, had a car outside my house that was uh, squealing around a curve. Hope everyone's okay. All right, we're at 163. These are going to start changing faster the, the further north we get. Closer to inline north-south. Which is why once we hit about 170 I'm gonna go ahead and roll right six nine one seven zero one eight oh Yeah, it's definitely bringing me down. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to turn the autopilot off. Adjust my view a little bit. And I'm going to enter this. This way. Hey, Bard, thank you so much for showing up. I appreciate you being here. You're gonna mess up my concentration? I don't think you're gonna mess up my concentration. I don't think you can do it. Oh, you've been called out. Part of the reason I don't think you can do it is I have no idea why my alert box doesn't seem to be working. So if you're hitting a button, uh, I don't get to. St I don't know that it's going to show up. Hey, there is a button. Button, 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 button. Yeah, it's not reading it out, and my my alert box is. Oh, I see what happened. I know what happened. There we go. I'm gonna trim this down so I don't stall. And then I'm gonna test one of these. It's still not going. Hold up. Sorry, right, I'm 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 on descent, so I'm very very high. Mm -hmm. 
me see. I need to do this. There we go. Okay, so I was able to replay that one. Right, so this should be at heading 180. Okay, I see where it is. Still too far to the right. I think it's that little cut in between the trees. I think I literally have to fly over this house. Wind calm. Oh my god, how? How even? Add a little bit of power. Don't want to go too far below 75 until we're like down. Oh, this doesn't seem right. This really does not seem right. About to blow the doors off this barn. Here we go. Landing time locked. Landed at 02 Mike Uniform, Timberline Air Park. All right, and we are stopped. I don't know if this is the actual runway, but I'm not sure if they know if this is the actual runway. Let's shut down our lights. Shut engine down our engines. Shut down our bacon. Okay. An on -air company. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys on air. Pardon me. Um, let me make sure everything that needs to be on is still on. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to flip over to on air and show you okay so this is what happened this tells me when the engine came on when i went airborne when i touched down when i came when i turned off the engine who did it how much xp i got um you'll see here my i got dinged for my landing lights being on above flight level 120 and that landing lights were off during approach which is a bug um because i definitely had them on you guys saw Um, I didn't get the safety bonus because of that. Um, but you can see here, I'm still in pretty good condition. Uh, I did get 0.05% reputation, which is actually pretty good. You can look at the flight record here. Switch this over to chat so that I can actually tell or say, and if anything, and you can kind of see what happened here. This is where I got dinged. For my landing lights being on. Um, here, I think this is probably where I turned off my flaps. Go away. Don't go away. Oh, no. That's just a position report. Another position report. So here's where I got dinged for my landing lights being off below 10,000. Now, technically, this is a turbine aircraft, not a piston aircraft, so I didn't get uh, I didn't get the um, 1,000 foot AGL. And this is my approach. This is an amazing amount of integration of data. It's tracking a tremendous amount of data as we. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find another another job. I'm gonna start. Find jobs 
So we're going to start from 0 to MU. I've already got the uh, capacities of my aircraft put in. I'm going to query the logistics center. And it's going to search for things coming out of this uh, air park. Now, I'm first going to look at these where it's got this green star, because that's outstanding pay for the, di for the distance. And that takes us back north, which I like the idea of going back north. Um, click a 02MU just to see, do I have the ability to get any fuel here? Oh, of course not. Okay, um, you know what I'm going to do? Instead of taking a job from here, I'm going to go to the FBO database. We are at 02MU in the Lion Air Park. We're going to search around and we're going to find the nearest one with Jet 1A. Um, so we're going to go by... Then we're gonna look for Jet 1A. Probably gonna go here, it's a little bit cheaper. So we're gonna go to MU 98. And we're not going to carry anything. Actually, no, you know what we're gonna do? This is what we're gonna do. I have to I have to reset the simulator to get me on the right position on the airport. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to MU98. So we're gonna go from 0 to Mike Uniform. The Mike Uniform 98, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and Take that job. Go to Mike Uniform. And go ahead and take that job because that's seven grand I don't want to pass up. We're gonna take that job. We're gonna go to our live operations map. And this is where you can see where I'm at, where the airplane's at. These are others in my virtual airline that are not where I'm at. But I can grab this one. I'm going to go and prepare for flight. I'm going to go ahead and load this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to confirm and fly now. But where I'm actually going to go is to MU-98. And so you can see right here, right now, um, it's actually loading my cargo and it's going to take one and a half a little under one and a half minutes i suppose at this point a little over one minute so it actually takes time there are skills involved in how quickly this will load um this is not have to do with your network or anything this is purely the game this is part of the game is how long it takes to load cargo Um, so it's doing apron work and it won't let me do anything in the meantime. You might hear that I just loaded my simulator. So one thing that I have to do is I have to hit these, these five buttons. I'm going to go ahead and switch this back so that you guys can see me. Uh, I have to switch these five switches off. This is how we start. Actually, I think this one's off. But I have to switch these off, all except beacon, and I have to cut the engine. I'm going to go ahead and click these to get rid of them so I can see all the instrumentation. <coughs> and we're almost done. I'm going to go ahead and throw on air back up. All right, so now you'll see passengers okay, cargo okay, fuel loading finished. We are set up to go to MU-98. And I'm going to go to the flight tracking page. Now, it's going to be a little confused because why are we going to MU-98? And I'm like, well, I've got no gas. So we are going to take off, turn left, do all the nice, beautiful things that we do. 
gonna go ahead and as soon as it starts tracking, I'm gonna switch on strobe lights, switch on the bacon light, turn on my starter, mixture control full. I'm gonna set this to about 2,000 feet. Your flight will be monitored until you land and shut down the engines. Alright, so it's still spinning up. I don't want to do anything until it's fully spooled up. And I'm going to switch off on air because there's nothing else going on there. I've been saying all that stuff. It's these, these lights right here. I had to turn these off and then cut the engine. And then I had to turn on the starter and add fuel with the bacon and strobe light on. That's it. That simple. And I've preset my altitude to 2,000. We're very close to it already. Oh, we're 1,000 feet. We're 1,500 feet up. So I'm going to go and set this to 2,500. That'll get us 1,000 feet AGL. All right, so our engines are fully ready. Release the parking brake. Make sure all that's on. Flaps are deployed. We're going to go ahead and throttle up a bit. That house is coming up awful fast. Come on. Oh, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Airborne time locked. Woo! This is what I'm talking about with the uh, autopilot trying to kill me. It should not be controlling my roll. We're going to go ahead and switch nav on now. All right. Now let's go ahead and try to find MU-98. Right there. Look to runway. Uh, we're going to be coming from. Closest is the runway to. Full stop landing. Stop swerving. You're not drunk. Once again, I think it's actually going to do me better. Disengage my autopilot. I've just barely, barely started the flight. But we're already going to be banking to set up for our approach. And that last airport, you can kind of see what I meant about not being able to tell. Um, about not being able to tell where the airport is without these markers. Um, and there's no way for me to know before I go out. Like, there are some that say that they're a size one airport and they're fully paved, they've got lights, everything's fine. And then there's some that say that they're, you know, size one and they've... There, there, it's just grass. There's just a field and a dude's house, and I'm landing in the middle of his cookout. You know what I'm saying?
But this is basically what VFR is, is you just pick a direction, you fly in it, you fly based on what you can see around you, You're not too worried about the instruments and what they say. Um, there are uh, seaplanes in this. Uh, I would not recommend them. Basically, you've got the Icon A5, but um, while the airplane is good, they have no idea how the physics of water works. So I'm going to go ahead and bank in slow. Our magnetic heading should be about 200. Really do not see where this airport is. Okay, I think I see it. In that little spot of dead land. Wing 260 at two knots. Wish I'd taken the time to get to know this airstrip and know what its uh, elevation is. up a little bit. Alright, we're going to aim for that little grass strip running right down the middle of that arid desert. But the fact that, that kind of looks like an airstrip right below us, the left side. back a lot of throttle. Landing there we time go. Locked. Landed at Mike Uniform 98 Eagle's Nest. Now why does this place have Jet 1A? Let's set that parking brake. Turn off our lights. Put our engine. Off time logged. Beacon off. End of flight. Registered in on air company. All right, now we're gonna look at on air real quick. So I'm gonna show you refuel it. Valid flight. Everything looks good. We got a reputation increase. We got no dings. We got a ten percent, uh, ten percent safety bonus. Nice. Oh, flight. Okay. Now, we're going to go from where are we at? Uh, MU-98. Mike Uniform-98. Alright, so we're going to prepare for the next flight, and that's going to go from Mike Uniform-98 to... APTS. Kilo Papa Tango Sierra. Alright, so we are departing Mike Uniform-98. Eagle's Nest. We are arriving Kilo Papa Tango Sierra, Atkinson Municipal, Pittsburgh. That's going to be 75 nautical miles. It looks like I've got plenty of range, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and fuel just in case APTS doesn't have Jet 1A. 
Let's add a little bit of fuel. Number 56. Okay, so we're gonna confirm and fly now. Now you're gonna see how it, the way that it added the cargo, it's gonna do the same thing with fuel, just fuel goes faster. Meanwhile, I'm reloading the sim. I'm gonna go to, was it Kilo, Kilo Papa Tango Sierra. It looks like everything is loaded in. And go ahead and go back to simulator as soon as I start the tracking here, and as soon as the simulator is ready. It does take the simulator a minute. Not something that I love about it, but it does. It's something that they're looking into, they are going to be fixing. So now we're going to start tracking. Except I fucked Your up. Your flight will be monitored until you land and shut down the engines. Well, that'll probably ding me. That's okay. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and transition. Make sure that I'm on the right screen. Making sure everything's still there and functioning. <laughs> Alright. Let me get rid of these so I can see. And then I'm going to set this. Our distance was 90 something, so let's go to 10,000. And then I'm going to bug our current heading. And then let's release our parking brake and start throttling up. Start throttling slowly. time locked. Bank a little harder. Go ahead and turn on the autopilot. Flight level. Then I'm gonna bug this up to 91 knots. And then we get to bank this to the left. Try to line up on our navigation bar on our heading. And I am way off. I'm banking way more than I should. I'm still not very used to the Grand Caravan. All right, now I'll turn on nav mode. It should just ease me back into flying in line. All right. There we go, and we're back on course, heading to our next destination. I'm gonna make a little money, another seven grand. I'm getting yelled at by my phone. Thankfully, it is actually on silent today. But thank you guys all for being here. If there's anything you wanna see, so, if there's anything you want to see, please let me know either here or in Discord. Uh, Discord's the best place because it won't get lost so easily. I do have a channel specifically for stream suggestions. I also have one for flight suggestions. I do have a um, 
half of my fights. Let's see if I can't find that. Um, so I built a Google Maps of all the places I've flown and all the places I plan to fly. Um, and if I didn't have on air, I would be doing a different flight today. Um, here we are. Here we are. In my map. I want to align. Share. Here we go. Link anyone with the link can view. Boy thing. So these are all the places that we have flown on stream and everywhere that we plan to go. So the blue locations are areas that we have gone. Red are places we plan to go. Um, now, not 100% of these have been done on stream. Some of them were done off stream, but I couldn't tell whether it was a stream day or not. Um, so I just recorded everything that I had done up until that point. Um, but most of these, I'd say probably at least 80, 85% were all done um, online on Twitch. Uh, also, I have a YouTube. And um, I'm uploading all of my Twitch streams of my flights to YouTube. I have several already up. Uh, let me get that link as well. If I was a professional streamer, I would already have this stuff done. What I'm going to do, I'm going to link you guys to my most recent released video. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to link you guys to my most recent video. I have three released right now. Uh, I release every Friday at midnight central. What that means is for most of you, it will probably be on two, on Thursday. So, um, you know, it, it will release in two days, five and a half hours. So it will be there waiting for you first thing Friday morning. Um, I've been uploading a lot of, um, Microsoft Flight Sim stuff. I also have a lot of X-Plane stuff waiting to be released. Um, one thing that I am speeding up and doing out of order is I recently did a flight from Frankfurt to Amsterdam Schiphol in the A320neo in uh, Microsoft Flight. And then I did that same flight the next week in X-Plane 11 in the A319 by Tolis. And I did kind of a comparison contrast to the flights, how easy the flights went, and generally my performance during those flights. Um, so I think the X-Plane, I think the, the, the Microsoft Flight one is already out. I think that's the one that I already linked to you. Yes. And then the, um, the X-Plane one will be releasing this week. So this week you will see the comparison contrast of the exact same flight. I, I even used the same flight plan. Uh, obviously I regenerated for the weather and everything, but um, the routing and everything was exactly the same. Uh, it didn't wind up going the same because Microsoft did not want to cooperate with how I was trying to program the map to... Uh, use my waypoints because you can't really you can't really use the FMC yet um, the MCDU has very very limited capacity it is missing a lot of waypoints um, it's not even just like old nav data it's bad nav data I don't know what they did but uh, it wasn't good they skipped a lot of stuff um, but really they just did not care about the airliners to begin with so, um, I did those. I also, in the uh, first Microsoft Flight Sim video that I did, I did a bunch of the landing challenges. Those I found very, very fun. Um, the VFR in this, 
is very fun. I, I have a lot of fun with the VFR landing challenges, even the ones with the really, really shitty performance, like landing the, uh, the 747 at JFK. I had fun with that, even though um, it made even my computer crawl, and I have a really nice computer. I think I have like 32 gigs of RAM, I have a 12-core CPU, uh, I think it's an i7-9300K, I'm, I'm not sure, um, off the top of my head. <clears throat> but I have a very nice computer, and it made it chunk hard. It died. Um, I think I was probably getting 20 or 30 FPS. But right now I'm getting a solid 60. Easy. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I, I know that it's it's high. Um, now I'm told part of that is because of the refresh rate on the uh, PFD and the MFD. But that's weird considering the fact that and functionally, it's the same thing that these glass cockpits are. You know, it's... It, it, functionally, it's the same thing. Alright, so we're about to reach 10,000 feet, which is our cruising altitude. We'll need to start descending at 10 miles. Currently at about 60 miles away. We don't want to turn off our lights because um, on, a, on, on, on air is very particular. And if I have the lights on at 9,999 feet, it dings me for my lights being off at under 10,000 feet. Um, the window that it gives me to have my lights on or off is anywhere between 10,000 and 12,000. So I have to have them off before 12,000, back on before 10,000. Which is fine, as long as I know that. I did get dinged quite a few times uh, because I reached 10,000 and I turned off my lights. And then the plane dipped down just slightly under 10,000 and it didn't. And I, I was not very happy with that. Now, I could go ahead and set up flight following, but why? There's no real point. Uh, just so I can hear the, the, uh, the radio, you know, pass me back and forth for hours. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I just have to, in order to get my... Um, my landing guides, I have to um, make contact with traffic when I get there. Which is not a big deal. That's something I can definitely do. What I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to take a step out of the simulator and I'm going to go and grab a drink of water. I'm going to try and set you with an outside view. And it's not going to cooperate very well. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not... Wait, there we go. Definitely does not want to let me manipulate this camera. Yeah, I don't know what it, it wants me to do. So I'm just going to leave you with this. And I'm going to go and grab a drink real quick. And I will be right, right back.
right, and we're back. <clears throat> you have to excuse me, my throat is not doing great. Need to remember to go ahead and pull my flaps back in. I'm not paying attention. I'm gonna pull this back to I uh, not to idle, but to uh, I'm gonna pull it back to uh, cruise. I'm gonna pull back some of my mixture. Get about 50%. Pull back RPMs. good oh all right <clears throat> I apologize I am getting a little scratchiness in my throat I'm not sure why but uh, that's definitely a thing that's happening probably because I'm talking an awful lot and I am uh, being awful loud that's just how my voice be but if I'm not careful about it my voice gets scratchy. But this is basically how you play the game. Um, whenever I fly from my virtual airline, they get 50%, I get 50%. Um, they pay all my landing fee, all my fuel fees, all my rental fees. As long as I'm flying their planes. Now, if I rent a plane of my own, my VA does not cover that. That I have to pay for on my own. <clears throat> if I want to move on from the Grand Caravan and do something like a TBM, well, then I've got to go and buy a TBM. And I will have to pay for the landing fees, I'll have to pay for the fuel, I'll have to pay for everything for that. But uh, the only time that we split profits is when I'm flying for the VA. It seems weird, right? I would think that if I'm flying the plane myself, I would be resp not for the VA, and we're not splitting the benefits, then I should not get my landing fees and uh, rental fees and fuel fees and all that paid for either. But uh, that may be just a question of, you know, the VA's policies. As a VA, you can look at an actual, like, expense report that tells you everything that has gone out, everything that's come in, and if they see that a pilot is having a lot going out and not a lot coming in, well, then they know that they need to take a look at that. <clears throat> and maybe need to talk to that pilot and tell them to stop using company assets to move personal cargo. That's how realistic this is, right? Like, you can set your own policies and... Your company can decide whether or not they are prepared to pay for your landing fees for every landing. Maybe they're fine with it. You know, mine is. Uh, Buana was the one that told me to fly this way. And he is the founder of the VA right now, as far as I know. He is the only, the sole owner of the VA. One thing that I don't like, and I don't know if this is just me, but I've had some trouble with figuring out if you can run multiple, like if, can I be in a VA and also start my own VA? Because at some point I would like to start a virtual airline for my company, for, for my stream, and have my community working together. Um, right now that's just more efficient for me to do with Buona, but at some point, if I get more 
people interested in my stream and get a bigger flight sim community in my stream then you guys might want to put together a virtual airline or air attack i literally have the livery made for the tolas a319 and if you're a patreon subscriber or a subscribe star subscriber you will get those matter of fact i think i have pins for that uh yeah, there's my Patreon. Then do I have one for Subscribestar? I do not. Where's my subscribe? There's my Subscribestar. And throw that in here. About 35 miles away. So if you are either one of those, uh, I think there is a subscription level at which you can download it. I don't... Th I don't remember if it's the first one. But I did want to provide people some kind of benefit for donating me money. <clears throat> um, I wanted you guys to have something to show for it. I didn't want to just be like, hey, I know you already come to the streams and I'm, you know, doing doing the work here to, to uh, you know, give you guys entertainment. But now that you've already shilled out your attention and maybe some money for a Twitch subscription, now I want you to hand me more on my Subscribestar or my Patreon. No, I, I want to actually give you something. Uh, pri oh, I know one of the tiers has priority for suggesting flights. Um, that I will absolutely do them. Even if you do a longer flight, as long as it's somewhat reasonable. I may have to do a special stream just to do it because like I can't I can't do a six hour flight on a Tuesday. Because I don't get off work until four. I'm not ready to stream until at least five. Um it takes me about an hour to set up the stream. Uh so I can't start before five. And I can't fly until eleven maybe until 12 or 1 just because you know whether i've got a headwind or a tailwind or something i don't know for sure um so i can't set up something like that but um i could then do it on like a saturday i could do like a special saturday stream if a patreon or subscribe star subscriber decided to um uh, to ask for something wild like you know LaGuardia to to uh, London or something let's go ahead and see if I can't figure out let's take a look outside really wish I could get this to go away. Really do. Gonna take a few screenshots. One thing they really need to figure out is replays. Replays would be really nice to have.
<laughs> Definitely not a good angle. Go ahead and go back inside. Another one right here. Unfortunately, because we don't have any replays, I have to grab all these while I'm on stream. <laughs> Let's get this thing reset. What, 19 miles away? We got another 10 miles until we descend. Let's see if we can't find it here. What are we looking for? Uh, Kilo Papa Tango Sierra. Kilo Papa Tango Sierra. There it is. <clears throat> All right, so we're on heading three on five. Let's get in for one one way. Through. Full stop landing. Kilo Papa Tango Sierra traffic Cessna Alpha Sierra X Ray Golf Sierra one nine miles southeast one zero thousand feet inbound to land runway three five. Okay, let's pop up a little bit. Change to heading mode. I'm gonna go heading two seven zero. I'm gonna go ahead and descend to two thousand five hundred feet. Go ahead and pull back the throttle. Drop this down to about 107. That looks good to me. We're gonna slow our descent for just a little bit and then we're gonna level back out to descending. <clears throat> then when we're on heading, what, 350? 348. When our bearing is 348, we're going to turn in and do a straight in on three five, on runway 35. I don't know what what they decided to to rate these brackets on, but it's absolutely not real world the way that they do them. Um, the speed requirements are absolutely ludicrous. 
to expect me to drop to I think I think it wants 85 knots for these first ones. I'm I'm pretty sure that's not real world. I'm not 100% because I'm not a real world pilot. But I don't think they want me slowing down that much. Looking for 348. I'm going to wait until we're at about 346, 345. Then I'll swing us in. Right now we're at 333. Didn't feel right. Three, four, eight. Oh, no, no, it was correct. It was correct. So you know what? I'm just going to turn that off. Turn the autopilot off entirely. That's what we're going to do. We're going to fly this manually. No big deal. So it's a little bit of height in the cockpit. At least it gave us a straight in. I do appreciate straight in. Our position. Kilo Papa Tango Sierra in traffic Cessna Alpha Sierra X ray Golf Sierra 12 miles south 6,000 feet inbound to land runway 35. One thing that I do like that I have to deal with in this is because I have a single engine aircraft and it is turning a prop, it does constantly want to roll to the right. I'm glad they did it. I hate it, but it is physically correct. I do hate having to constantly trim that. And it's not aileron input, right? Even if I had aileron trim put in, it still wouldn't stop the rotation. I can't just trim that rotation out. Because it's a roll, not a yaw. And aileron trim will make me yaw. Dip the nose down just a little bit more. Go ahead and put out flaps one. down a little bit more. Mm. Trim is so sensitive. Also, I feel like this is rotated. These, these brackets are not level with the ground. I don't think this thing has the ability to see localizer and glide slope and all.
trying to trim out Keeps trying to trim me back. That's one of the complaints that I've heard a lot about this is that the trim is way too sensitive. And I, I agree, it is too sensitive. And it seems to reset itself completely randomly. basically lined up. This is a very large runway. I can definitely see it. There's no worrying about it being grass. Now I'm trying to ignore these things. Basically, I just use them to point out the landing strip to me. And once I've done that, they're basically useless. <laughs> Wind calm. Wind calm. Floating. Landing time locked. Ooh. Landed at Kilo Papa Tango. That was Sierra, harsh. Atkinson Mun. All right. Let's go ahead and set our parking brake. Make sure our starter's off, lights off, engine off, engine off time, bacon locked. off. End of flight. Registered in on air company. And let's take a look at on air. All right. Uh, looks like I got dinged for the engine on at tracking start. That's the reason why I need to turn it off. Beacon and strobe were off at engine start, which they weren't. They were both on. Uh, so instead of getting 0 .7, 0 0.07, I got 0 0.02 reputation. I didn't get the bonus uh, experience for the safety. I did still get 42 experience points. So that's something. That's something. 
So it looks like now that I've done those, let's look at where my company is. So when you start, you start with 10,000 credits and that's it. I now have 89,001, which means I have gained $79.1 thousand uh, dollars. We can actually take a look at my balance sheet. This will show you, this is my cash on hand. That doesn't really tell me anything because I don't own anything yet. I'm just renting stuff. You can see that somebody bought shares. This is the $10,000 that you start with is owner equity which they can pull out. Um, I can look at, what is it, my cash flow statement? Nope. That does tell me a lot, including the one time I had to abandon a job because I didn't have the ability to hire people and it was passengers. And for some reason, even though there's only 14 slots on the plane, even though there's like nine seats, I have to have a flight attendant. I don't know why, but I do. Um, so I had to abandon that because I didn't have the skills yet to be able to hire anybody, including flight attendant. Um, where is, is my income statement? Nope. Well, that will tell me a lot. Like I can tell from my cargo services and I can see every job that I've gotten in from. Uh, I can see all my expenditures, which you can see I have had no expenditures except for the 12 cent penalty that I got for abandoning that trip. Um... <clears throat> Where is my cash flow history? I think that's what I was looking for. Yeah, okay, so you can see here, I've, I've been playing a lot. <laughs> I think you can tell that I am enjoying this game a lot. I am enjoying On Air. It is very, very fun if you are looking to make a career out of flight sim. This is how to do it. Don't get sucked in by FSE. If FSE is too easy. FSE, there's no progress. There's no getting better at it. There's... It just hands you everything. You can fly anything at any time. It's just too easy to make money. Um, it's basically just, you know, number bloat. That's all it is, is number bloat. Um, but on air, it legitimately feels like I'm doing something. Like I have to do these things. And <clears throat> it is legitimately fun just grabbing a plane, going to some little bush airport in the middle of nowhere, and just flying somewhere. You have no idea where you're going. You have no idea what it looks like. You've never been there before. It's something totally new to you. It's so cool to just have a reason to fly to the middle of nowhere and just have fun. And be able to do it in this tiny little plane that's just, it's, you know, getting 12 gallons to the mile and you just fly like a bat out of hell. You know? I mean, you don't in the Grand Caravan. The Grand Caravan's got a top speed of like 159, 160. <laughs> but the, uh... But like, some of the other planes, like the TBM, you get you get fast. You get you get 250 plus knots. And, and eventually you can work your way up to airliners. They have, you know, Boeing. They have Boeings. They have Airbuses. You just have to work up a lot of money to use them because they use real-world prices for these planes. So, I think it's just... Uh, on Air has blown my mind. I'm still in my free trial, but guess what? I'm going to be subscribing to it. I'm going to be paying for it because it's that good. It deserves it. I've already sold people on it. Um, I haven't paid them a dime, and I have already made them $67 that I know about. Um, hopefully some of you guys have gotten interested in it because you can do this even without a simulator. You can just go onto Cumulus and just hire AI to fly the planes and you just manage the airline. There is nothing wrong with that. And you never have to fly a plane. Not once. This is so fun. I have been sucked into it. I, I have been losing sleep. I have lost sleep because of On Air. Not that that's a lot to accomplish, but, um, <clears throat> man, On Air is so fun. Guys, try it out. It's seven days for free. You can't get better than free 99. You can't get better than free 99. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the stream here. 
thank you guys so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. And I want you guys to know that I love you. Just for being here. You know, that's the kind of vibe that I want from the stream. I love you guys. Because you're why I do this. This is not just, you know, something that I do in my spare time because reasons. Because I want to get famous. I don't want to get famous. I want friends. You know, I want, I want people that know me. <clears throat> and that's why, like, I know that it's not a very popular thing as a streamer to be yourself. Um, some people can get away with it. Some people can't. I'm hoping that I'm the one that can. Um, I want to be me. I want, I want to let people see me. And doing something that I have a passion for. Something that I really just... I love the hell out of. You know? Like this. Flight Sim. It's my jam. I do it every Tuesday. Every Tuesday at 5 to 7. Every week. Um, I also do retro games. Uh, re retro RPG style games. So... And, and I don't necessarily mean that they're all old. But they're all that old style. Right? You know, where you've got a bunch of different equipment slots, and it's, you know, point-to-point -point kind of stuff. Secret of Mana, uh, Trials of Mana. Um, we've done Final Fantasies before. Uh, I will not be doing 14. I will not be doing 12. Uh, not going to be... Probably not going to be doing 15. Um, they're too new. They don't have that old-school feel. Uh, seven's probably the newest thing I'll do, as far as the style. Um, I probably won't be doing 8, I won't do 9, I won't do 10, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I may do things like, uh, Secret of Evermore. I did, I was able to do some really cool things with Final Fantasy VI and with, um, Secret of Mana in that I was able to play them both on Steam and on SNES. I do have a capture card that I use to stream things directly off of my Super Nintendo. It's an actual Super Nintendo not even like a you know snes classic or anything like that no it's an actual you know 1990s super nintendo in the original smoke damaged yellowed gray like i not even kidding it's just sitting across the room right now looking right at it i've also got a ps classic uh i've got a ps1 not a psx a ps1 i wish i had a psx uh but I broke the spindle on mine, <laughs> playing Final Fantasy VII, to be, uh, to be ironic. Um, but I have a, a, a pretty decent collection of Super Nintendo games uh, that I do plan on streaming a bunch of. And hopefully you guys enjoy that kind of shit. I, I just want to share my love of that with new people. And hopefully get you guys interested and keep that old style active in the world. Alright, guys, I'm going to go ahead and take off now, try and rest my throat a little bit, because uh, I've got a stream coming up tomorrow. So, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope to see you again soon. Drop a follow if you enjoyed what you saw and want to see it again. Uh, make sure you hit the notification bell, because uh, that's a thing now, even on Twitch. Uh, nobody figured out that nobody liked it on YouTube, and now nobody gets to like it on Twitch either. Uh, speaking of YouTube, I have one, uh, I am Arak, A-T-K, A-R-A-K, A-T-K. Whether I'm on Twitch, whether I'm on YouTube, it does not matter. I'm the same person. Um, so if you are watching this on YouTube, please like, comment, subscribe, all those nice things. You know what to do. You don't need me to tell you. You have 70,000 YouTube content creators telling you this every fucking day but guys it really matters not so much because we want to hear from you because we do but because it helps with the algorithm it helps to th get our videos out there get people to see what we're creating that's very very important and it helps so so much to have you guys go and throw those likes to watch those videos preferably more than a few seconds but you know what if I, if that's what i can get that's what i'm gonna take Whatever it takes, guys. Let me know what you think. Jump into the Discord. Say hello. Tell me what you think. I am not going to become this streamer where I forget who I was. I'm me. That's it. So feel free to approach me, to talk to me. 
I'll probably be awkward because I'm just a chode like you. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Obviously. Otherwise, I'd have more of my social media working and all that stuff. But, guys, thank you for being here. Have a great night. Let's find somebody to raid. Because I feel like raiding somebody, and I feel like that would be fun. So let's do that. Um, I'll look at my Twitch, and hopefully it's not going to start screaming at me the second that I load in. It definitely is. Do we have anybody that's online? You know what? There is somebody. We're going to stream the person that got me into on air in the first place. We are going to raid Anna. All right. Thank you guys for being here, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>